Hey, I'm Josh. And I'm Aiden from Vacuums R Us and Sewing 2 here in wonderful Colorado. And today we're going to go over possibly the best and most comprehensive guide for you to find the best vacuum cleaner for your home. Definitely the most comprehensive. For sure the most comprehensive. Definitely the best. This video might be long, so stick with us, but you're going to learn a lot about vacuum cleaners. You're going to be a vacuumologist. <laughs> Seriously, exit the video if you don't want to be a vacuumologist. We'll send you the certificate if you watch the whole video. Right. So, I mean, as you can see, we have a lot of different types of vacuum cleaners here. We have, uh, you know, bagless vacuum. We have a canister vacuum, an upright vacuum. we got a robot vacuum right there. and Stick vacuums. Stick vacuum and that yellow monstrosity. That's that, a backpack. It's a backpack. Vacuum. Backpack. Okay, and we'll, we'll talk about that it. later. Um, but... We're going to go over every single one of these vacuum cleaners, at least their types, to make sure that you choose the best one for your house. And I guess the best way to start would probably be to talk about bagged versus bagless. I mean, it's a big concern for a lot of people. Yeah, and you know, I don't want to beat a dead horse. There's thousands of videos on YouTube about bagged versus bagless. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't want to spend too much time on that because I think the the uh, horse is dead. Yeah, the horse is dead, but. There's, there's three different concerns, generally speaking, that I hear um, when people are talking about the decision to get a high filtration bag machine or a bagless machine. Um, they're concerned about the cost of filtration material, so the cost of bags or filters. Um, they're concerned about uh, environmental impact is actually a really big one, right? We're becoming more aware of our impact on, on the world around us. Right. And so a lot of people have the perception that <clears throat> disposing of vacuum cleaner bags will have a greater impact uh, than what a, a bagless machine might have. Right. Um, and performance is the other thing. I think that's less of a concern now. I think people are starting to realize that, uh, you know, that, the whole, yeah, and, yeah. that the whole bagless is higher performing thing is mostly marketing, but that is still something that we hear, we hear talked about. Right. The kind of no loss of suction and airflow. Yeah. And everything yeah. Like that. Yeah. I mean, I walked down the aisle in Target, the vacuum aisle, which I try not to, but I walked down that aisle. You can't avoid and, it. You yeah. Know? Every single, I'm, I'm like, it's like a magnet. It, yeah. I'm like, what so is sad. happening there? It's right. It's like it's like driving by a car crash. I try not to look. But, right. Yeah. And and you you walk every every box there, right. says something about suction and the best suction and the greatest and the no loss of suction and the and all that right. on on all those bagless machines. Right. So as far as performance is concerned, um, I, I I have some concerns around bagless design and performance. Um, they, we talk about no loss of suction. And there's a couple of different metrics that are typically measured when we're looking at machine performance. One of them is suction, and that's a measurement of how well sealed the machine is and how much suction it's losing through air leaks, right? And the fact is most machines, like low to high-end machines, they have very similar suction anymore. There's not a huge variance anymore like there used to be. Right. They're all fairly well sealed. But airflow is a really important factor, and that's how much dirty air is going in the vacuum right. and coming out clean again. Um, and that's something that the bagless companies don't talk about. Mm -hmm. um, my concern with the bagless designs is that they're so complex inside the, the cyclonic canister, they build up with debris. I mean, we've got videos out of our technicians blowing out the inside of the canisters, this and it is looks crazy. It's yeah, the amount it's like of a dust storm. Yeah, it's bad. Yeah, and but what that does, I mean, beyond the health impacts, that debris that builds up inside of the canister, inside the cyclones, it reduces airflow over time. Right. Um, and I, I think where this perception came from is that a, a certain um, English gentleman talked about the extensive testing that right. he did on vacuum cleaners and how the concept of bagless machines was better because they don't lose suction over time. Right. And it's important to note in some of his earlier documents and advertising about his uh, inventing process, the machine that he was comparing against was 70 years old right. today. So the bag machine was very old technology mm -hmm. um, that he was comparing against. So as far as performance is concerned, um, yeah, you know, bag you don't see the, the kind of loss of performance that... that in modern have. high filtration bag machines, it quite right. the opposite. Right. And I guess the other concern that you brought up that a lot of people have is, is the price of bags and filters and that kind of stuff. Right. I mean, generally speaking, with most bag machines, and obviously you'll have some variance between people, you know, their environments are different, your environment's different from mine and, and so forth. But from a general standpoint, you're probably going to go through a pack of bags, a six pack of bags every year. That's good ballpark. And I, I think generally speaking, those bags go anywhere from 20 to $25 for the six pack. That's about right. So that's about your yearly cost. And once again, there'll be some variance, but that's about roughly what you can expect. Um, and the filters, you know, you might 
they might be a little bit more expensive than some of the bagless filters, but you have to replace them less often. So Much that, less, yeah. Yeah, that, that kind of varies itself out. And then what about the ecological impact? Is that a major concern, do you think? It is, it is. And, and I don't want to discount the concern about putting vacuum cleaner bags in the landfill. Right. Um, but I do want to contrast and kind of bring us back to reality here. And, and at this point, I believe firmly in some of the environmental impacts that humans are having on, on, on the world around us. Right. But I think that we need to take practical steps and, and we have to clean our houses. So I think it's a, the lesser of two evils. And I think high filtration bag machines are profoundly less evil. Right. So essentially you're putting a dirt bag in the landfill. Right. I would much rather put a dirt bag in the landfill than the alternative. And the alternative is to throw vacuums away because the reality is these low filtration bagless machines do not last that long and they're not made to be repaired. I we are throwing millions and millions of plastic vacuum cleaners into the landfill every year, and most of them are low filtration bagless machines. I mean, and personally, we probably throw away hundreds just here. Yes, I yes. Mean, we try yes. to recycle what we can, but we, I'm, yeah, and that we do much. too. We yeah, strip yeah. a lot of stuff out, and we have, I think, six, seven dumpsters per week, and I would say it's eighty percent vacuum cleaners. Yeah. or parts of vacuum cleaners that we couldn't recycle are going to the landfill. Right. Uh, just That's just us. Yeah. Um, yeah. And bag machines just plain last longer. Yeah. I mean, you're looking at... Uh, a lot of the times, the, the bag vacuums, they have the biodegradable bag material. Yep. I know Bunch, a, lot of a lot of them do, are moving yes. to that. Yep. And, uh, you know, some of them have plastic bag docks. And those you can actually remove and recycle, I think. Yeah, I think SIBO actually marks what the plastic is. Well, you can't right. recycle plastic in the U.S., but it's a, right. we're getting there. We're, you know, yeah, we're, we're starting. Right. Yeah, I mean, I, I think they're moving in the right direction to, yes. to even eliminate that or at least reduce that impact that they have. I would rather throw bags of dirt in the landfill than throw chunks of plastic. Right. And, you know, we said we weren't going to beat the dead horse. There's a trillion videos out there, so... You know, we kind of we did we, beat went, it. we, we beat, went a little bit on we beat it we beat it um, but you know that's just what we have to say about that as, as people in the vacuum industry so now that we've kind of gone over you know the bag versus bagless debate for the millionth trillionth time I mean I guess it's kind of the the next important question is what vacuum type is best for you what kind of vacuum yeah right because there's just so many like you have your stick and your robot and your upright and on and on and on generally speaking. A stick vacuum will be really good for you as maybe a secondary vacuum. Maybe if you have a lot of bare floor and some real low pile area rugs, it'll be an okay vacuum for you. But I think the concern here with us is that a lot of people will try to get a, a Dyson stick vacuum and use it for their wall to wall carpet and 17 dogs. And it just <laughs> will not perform like that. And to be clear, there's nothing wrong with having 17 dogs. No, no. We have four that The only here. thing wrong with having 17 dogs is you don't have 18. Right. That's the main problem. That's the biggest that. problem I have. And probably that. some pet hair. Yeah. And if that's you, oh, yeah, that's you right. don't want to stick back. Yeah, you don't want to stick back you if do you not have 17 one. or 18 dogs. On bare floor, though, they're really good. Yeah. I, I really like using them as a quick pickup yep. or for the bare floor. A lot of them will also come with those kind of like soft heads, too, mm -hmm. which can be really nice. They perform super well on your bare floor, but you, you can't expect it to be good for your deep cleaning. You know, getting your wall-to-wall -wall carpet, it's going to wear them out. It's yeah, gonna... even thicker throw rugs. Right. You know, it's, it's, it's a good, it's a, if you have a 2,000 square foot or better house, right. you need to have a stick back. Because yeah. you're going to have quick messes that you want to just grab it and clean it up. Right. But I yeah, don't want to deal with the cord and pulling right. the big vacuum out of the closet. My, my big concern is that what I see a lot of companies now marketing their stick vacs as replacements for right. a true vacuum. Full home vacuum. That's insane. Yeah. yeah. Like that's only going to lead to disappointment. Yeah. yeah. You're going to wear the thing out in a year, two years. Yeah. And, and not clean. And not clean. Carpet. And not yeah. deep clean. Right. So they definitely have a place in, in a lot of homes, but just not as a as In my home, I have vacuum. a stick vac. Right, exactly. I have a stick vac too. Yeah. But I don't use it for everything. Yeah. I really think that's kind of the important thing to know when it comes to stick vacuums. And the same thing can kind of be said for the robot vacuums. You know, I mean, a lot of people are like, finally, I can throw away my old Kirby or whatever <laughs> and get... A robot vacuum to do everything. It'll just do everything for me. Right. Does that clean my whole house? Right. That's not what they do yet. They're they're really good, I would say, if you have like that one room, you know, that's all bare floor, at least ninety five percent bare floor, just to kind of help you in between the times that you vacuum to kind of keep the floor clean. But these these will certainly not replace 
your traditional vacuum cleaner at all. Not yet. Yeah. We're, so. we're not there yet. It's not the Jetsons. Right. It, 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 I and, wish and it was. I wish it was too. Seriously. I, I do, because then I could retire. Um, yep. It, they definitely have a place. Statistically, about 75% of the dirt that's in your house comes in through your entryway. Right. And if you're able to put a robot vacuum in the room that is in your entryway, right. you'll stop 75% of the dirt from getting to the rest of the house. And that's great. But again, the, the concept that some of these companies are marketing these machines, that they're just going to clean your whole house and you've got one on your first floor and your second floor and you're never going to have to vacuum again, that's just right. that's bonkers. Yeah. That's absolutely bonkers. We're not there. I hope we will be, yeah. but we're not. Yeah, they don't have the power and they... they I mean, we've had a ton of robot vacuums dozens in here. and dozens and dozens. <laughs> Everything <laughs> from we from uh, we've had iRobot, and, Roomba, iRobot, Roomba. We had a whole bunch of the meal of the really the high end, too. the sharp ones. See a lot of those. The Bissels. The Bissels. They're just yep. not there. They're not. Yeah, and they're and they're you know there's some of them are okay machines, right? But it, this idea that they're they're not going to replace a, a an upright or a full size true, true I would, traditional I would kind of treat it. Like how you would, like how we were just talking about the stick vacuum, where you have that extra cleaning tool mm -hmm. to kind of help you out, but certainly not to replace your main vacuum cleaner in basically all cases. I think it's a good tool right. as, a, as, a, as a helper. Right. So, I mean, now that we've established that 95% of us are going to need a traditional vacuum of some type, exactly. we still have some decisions to make. There's right. a lot of different types of traditional machines. Mm -hmm. There's different brands as well. well. We'll get into that last kind of our, our take on different brands, generally speaking, but right. there's different kinds within the brands. There's different designs. So there's canisters and upright, which is a big consideration. And there's actually a couple different types of uprights as well. <laughs> right. so there's um, a lot of things to get into with vacuum cleaners. There really is. We said you would be a vacuumologist and you're going to be a You're earning the certification. Seriously, we'll print it out for you. No, we won't. No, we'll email it. Because I'll have to print it. I'm not going to email it either. Okay. Just tell people email. that vacuums are a certified user vacuum. Yeah, vacuum. just verbally. It's an honor system. <laughs> just verbally say it. Yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah. Canisters and uprights. Canisters, yeah. So what do you think about the canisters versus uprights? So one thing with canisters, I, I tend to think they, they're more versatile as far as addressing diverse floor types. Right. So if you have a home where, and this is a really common configuration, where you have like a, a plush carpet in your bedrooms upstairs, you maybe have a like a lower end frise carpet in your basement. You have hardwood on the main floor. You have tile in the bathrooms. Right. You've got all different types of flooring types. And the reality is uh, they need to be addressed and cleaned differently to be cleaned effectively. And I think that generally speaking, canisters tend to address these diverse floor types better, particularly when I start getting into things that are real challenges like plush carpets. Yeah. Uh, that's very popular now. Um, I tend to find that canisters can address that. And they're more diverse. The downside to canisters is a lot of us aren't familiar with them. We haven't used them. And you really use canister vacuums differently than you use upright vacuums. So it's kind of like learning to vacuum again. And that's where personal preference comes into play. Do you right. want to do that? Right. Do you want to learn to vacuum again? <laughs> or do you want to stick with upright vacuums, which maybe is what you're familiar with? But I mean, personally, for myself, I prefer upright vacuum cleaners. You know, I can feel you judging me. Most people in the industry prefer canisters. I'm, you know, the black sheep, I guess. Um, for me, I just like to vacuum and go. I don't like to pull something behind me, but obviously he sees things differently. But the canisters are very versatile. I'm right, but that's... No, you're not right. I, we're not, we're not doing this It's up to your personal preference. <laughs> right. We're not vacuuming your homes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, hopefully ever. I'm not. I do not want to vacuum other people's homes. I don't, I don't want to vacuum, vacuum my, my own home. So just whichever one works best for you. And that's kind of where brick and mortar comes in, where you can actually test out a canister before yeah. you buy it online. Because you see people who might buy one online, they pull it around, they hate the thing, they return it. Or they love it because canisters are better. <laughs> or they love it, uh, which a lot of people do. It's all personal preference. It really is, though. I, it, you know, all joking aside, I have... In, in the past, in my youth in the vacuum industry, I have pushed hard, uh, pushed canisters on people hard because that is my personal preference. And they didn't like them and they returned them for an upright vacuum. Right. And uh, there's really not some fundamental superiority. There's kind of tendencies, but right. you got to use it, not me. Yeah, you got to just try it out and see what, see what works best for you. So that brings us to uprights. That does bring us to uprights. 
basically with the upright vacuums, you have really two styles, I guess. I yeah, don't think it's really you could really narrow them all down to two styles. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, you have your your kind of standard, what what I would call standard, which you probably see most of the time is going to be your hard body mm -hmm. uprights. So you can kind of you know, that's a hard body versus a soft body upright. Um, do you have any preference towards those two or? I actually lean hard into customer preference on that because they're they're very, very different machines. So the soft body machines are, are where you get into your full performance ultralight machines. And then I, I right. think it's important to be very specific. These are full performance right. ultralight machines. The downside with those, they don't have tools on them. They can't, they cannot. So if anybody ever tries to sell you a lightweight vacuum that's a high performing machine, it's either not lightweight or it's not high performing because it's right. a design issue. They're actually designed completely different internally, right. which I'll get into in a tech, we'll get into that in a tech video one day. <laughs> one day, but not, not soon. But yeah, there's two different types. There's a, but when it's notable too, that all vacuum cleaners that I've ever seen in, hard, in um, major box stores are all hard body design. Right. So they're heavier and they have tools on board. Right. Yeah, I mean, but if a lot of people don't particularly need the tools on board, you know, like a lot of uh, Auric people, if you love your Auric, yep. it's because it's super lightweight. Um, Ricard has a really good upright um, kind of soft body machine. Yep. Typically, those are going to be super lightweight and they still perform super well. Yeah. And I think what most people do is they get their little handheld, mm -hmm. uh, either comes as a bundle or you buy it separately and that way you still do have some tools available for the car the stairs right exactly your, yep. your bookshelf you know whatever um, but after that you get into your standard hard body and i guess we kind of touched on that a little bit that's gonna be the one where you have your tools yep you have your hose you have your wand all that kind of stuff which can be pretty nice to have yeah and that's a broad that's a really broad category it, yeah. it really is i mean that covers dyson shark um, there's a whole series of cars, uh, the, uh, SIBO, I mean, there's just so many machines in the hard body category. That's the most popular category in the United States. Right. So that's what a lot of us are really familiar with. So now that we kind of know the two body styles that you're going to have with your upright vacuum, there's also different styles of canister vacuums. So for example, on this one, this is the SIBO D4, um, canister vacuum. This one here, you actually get a motorized power head. So you turn it on and you have a brush roll that's spun by a motor, which is going to be pretty typical. Um, but that one there, honestly, 90% of the people who want a canister bag, and that's what I recommend. At least yeah. for me. Because then you get into like the turbo brushes. Well, and the turbo machines have a have a play. So so these are straight suction machines. We have a Miele, it's a compact C1 um, turbo, right? Right. And Something. so these have rotating brushes similar to the SIBO that you just pointed to. And Miele, of course, has powered brush machines too. These have rotating brushes, but they're, they're fan powered. So the air actually spins a fan that's inside here, which attaches to a belt that spins the brush. Right. And they're much much lower power than the motorized power heads. Right. They work really well on bare floor or if you have shorter pile throw rugs. Right. And I used to lean really hard into these type of machines. The SIBO E2 Turbo is another one. Mm, yeah. um, and then uh, I think this there's a C3 from Miele. There's a bunch of machines that have D1. these. D1. Yeah, the D1. There's yep. a whole lot of them. There's a whole bunch of them. And I lean really heavy into them. But what I'm, I'm seeing, what I'm getting into a lot is that while people have the floor type, that is ideal for these. They have these really short throw rugs. They have a lot of hard surface. Uh, a lot of our customers now have just a lot of pet hair and right. these do not do great with that. They end up wrapping the pet hair. Right. And we've had, I've taken, I've actually taken quite a few returns of machines that have turbo brushes, swapping out to upgrade to a machine that has a power head because they handle the pet hair a lot better. Right. And if you're in that group of people with 18 dogs, first of all, yeah. Then make it 19. Come, come by here. Let us see them. And second Bring of all, all the dogs. <laughs> every dog. Yeah. Please. All we love them. dogs. I think we have, we have like six that work here. It's crazy. Is it six? I don't know. There's a lot of dogs. There's a lot there. of dogs. I, I miscount. But if you're in that group with even just a singular lone dog, you're probably going to want a powered nozzle. Yeah. At least for the most part. You know, I guess if you have a, 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 a poodle, 
who doesn't shed, maybe you'll get away with. I don't know. Don't beat up poodles. They're good dogs. I'm they're, not they're, beating they're, up they're poodles. Good dogs. They're, they're, they're good dogs. They're good dogs. Curly, weird dogs. They're good dogs. <laughs> they're they're, they're water dogs. dogs. They're water dogs. Back to vacuum cleaners. If you, if <laughs> it is important to know, <clears throat> it is important to know that whichever one you get, uh, if you go with a non-powered unit that has a turbo brush on it, that's where you're stuck. You can't just go out and buy a powered head. So the electricity that runs the power head travels through the hose and the wand into the power head. You have to start out with a machine that supports that. Right. And most manufacturers, like with SIBO, the D4 has a power head, the D1 does not. You can't just plug a powered hose, wand, and head into the D1. Right. You, there's the wiring, it's not there. Yep. So if you think you might need a power head, and you're kind of on the fence. Just get the power head. Get the get the power head. Right. And there's a reason people get the non-powered head. They're way cheaper. They're half as much. Way yeah. cheaper. Yeah, it's half as much machine. I mean, right. on a on a non-powered machine, you've got a vacuum cleaner and then you got a tube. Right. But right. on a powered machine, you've got a vacuum cleaner and then all the electronic stuff going on and a powered head. And so a motor in there. It's twice yeah. as much vacuum. <clears throat> if you are in the market for a canister vacuum, just make sure that you buy which one you need at first. Right. Yeah. That's kind of the point. A lot of the times it can be enticing to save that uh, that money up front. But then, you know, I think we saw it with the Milas. Where they were pushing into those hard, advertising the heck out of it. Yep. A lot of people buy it because it's a nice Mila canister. They work well, but not for most people's environments. So yeah, well, it was a, a specific one. They had this one straight suction unit that they blasted on Amazon. And they... Right. It was the number one most return skew they'd ever had. Right. And it wasn't because it was a bad machine. It was, a, it was actually a decent machine. But people were like, Mila, I know that brand, you know, my neighbor, whatever. And then they would see a Mila for like 300 bucks. They'd be like, all right. Yep. And it just wouldn't work. It doesn't work. Right. So it was because we can buy refurbished stuff uh, sometimes from sometimes. like Mila returns, right? Sometimes. And so we'd get the return list and it'd be like, hey, there's one of these and one of these and one of these. And it'd be like 2,500 of those available, <laughs> right? So, so just make sure you get what you need at yeah. first. And that's kind of what this video is, is to help you get what you need. I mean, we've went through most of the machines here, but I, in the corner of my eye, I keep seeing that yellow monstrosity backpack. That what, do, what is that doing here? Do you have people who look for that for their homes? Yeah, I do. And that's why I wanted it there because like nobody else has covered this topic. Who's buying that? Who's well, buying hopefully buying? no one, that's the, but yeah. people are asking for it and that's the problem. So uh, they're, they're, these are, we sell tons of these right. the commercial, cleaners the commercial cleaners for office buildings. They're not for your house. And it's always, and I, and I hate stereotypes, but th th <laughs> I don't like stereotypes, but literally this is every single time. This is how it is, bro. Comes bro. in, all right. Pa he parks his lifted Ram pickup truck. Bro, comes in, right? And he's right. like, "Oh, one of those big backpack vacuums that I saw the cleaners at my job using." And right. he's dragging his poor wife, and she's like, "I don't want to carry a space, <laughs> a, jet a rocket jetpack on right. my back. You're, if you we buy this, you're doing all the vacuuming in the house. Seriously. Regardless of the fact that it's a jetpack, they." They don't clean carpet. They're for commercial glue down carpet, primarily in office buildings. They're good on construction sites. We have a lot of uh, people who install bare floor use these. Right. Uh, they have a volume of uh, sawdust. There's, there's a number of commercial applications. I would never sell one of these to someone to use in their home. They're kind of like a shop vac that you strap to your back. Kind of, yes. A little bit. Kind of, yes. Well, yeah. some of them have better filtration than shop vac, but yeah, it's just not, it's not appropriate. It's always the same dude. It's always a lifted Ram pickup truck. Right. His wife is always behind him, rolling her eyes. She is right, bro. You're wrong. Do not get a backpack. Do not get a backpack for your house. Moving on to real things. What are we doing next? I think we're covering. I think, well, we we forgot the Jill with oh. the 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 straight yeah the straight suction Jill yeah that's another canister that you can get where it just has the uh, bristles on the bottom, no brush roll, no yeah, no turbo like brush. That. That's really only going to be used for your hard surfaces. Um, I think you have uh, a couple people who uh, have bought one of these kind of soft body. Yeah, uprights, which don't have the tools. Right, and use that as kind of like a, like a, oh, yeah, like a big oomph. Yeah, for yeah, their, they're, their kind they're, of handheld yeah, stuff. for instead of getting a little tiny handheld, they get a Jill, which is still a relatively small machine. And there's a bunch of machines in this category. I think Sibo's K1. Right. I and think Mila the Mila that trillion. I talked about that was getting returned all the time is actually in that category. Gotcha. And again, a good machine, but 
for appropriate use. Right. And it, it, this is not cleaning your plush carpet, your wall to wall, whatever. No. Um, fine machines, they're inexpensive, which is good because they're typically secondary machines, right. but that's what they're used for. That's the appropriate use for those type of machines. So I guess now the only thing really to talk about is brands. You know, we'll kind of go by price point, at least we'll try. I'm sure we'll miss a brand here and there and have to double back, but for the most part, it's going to be about price point. Yeah, we'll start low, go, go high. Right. Um, one thing I want to make clear to the lawyers watching from the various brands that we're going to cover, uh, this is personal opinion only. This is based on years of experience. We've spoken with thousands, tens of thousands of customers with tens of thousands of vacuum cleaners. Right. And it very well may be that maybe a particular brand, we've seen thousands of those machines where the customers were disappointed with that machine. Right. And that's simply, we're just simply sharing that experience that we had. So keep your cease and desist letters to yourself. You know who you are. Right. Um, but we're honestly, we are just sharing personal experience and our experience may not be shared by you. I know we're going to get somebody in the comments that, you know, we'll mention a brand that maybe we think doesn't last that long to be like, I had it for 20 years. Right. I'm sure you did. We're glad you did. That's, that's good for you. But, Happy. but the thousands of people that we've worked with, with that thousands brand, of comments that we uh, get on right. our YouTube videos. Right. About some right. brands. Some brands. Won't be named. Won't be named. So we're going to go over brands. They I think that's what a lot of people here came for anyway was our opinions on specific brands and we'll go low to high and, and spoiler alert, we're not like, obviously we like the high end vacuums. They're really great machines, but there's good entry level machines that are a good value too. And we understand that not everybody is in that position to buy a over thousand dollar vacuum. That's cleaner. a reality. You know, that's definitely a reality. So we're going to start from the bottom and go up with probably a little bit of juggling in between. Sure. So I think Bissell is really the 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 entry the entry point brand generally speaking, right? Yeah, probably. Uh, disclaimer: I have this ba uh, bandage on now. You might not have noticed that in between takes, I cut my finger on a door. I don't want to talk about it. Don't comment. You know, dude had a band aid in that one that one scene, but he didn't have it in the other one. I know he has challenges. I'm embarrassed already. A door took me out. That almost took me out. It's but late. we're going to start on Bissell. Yeah, okay. Bissell. So now Bissell's right there. I actually don't have anything really bad to say about Bissell's, surprisingly. They are uh, perfectly worth the money that people spend on them, and they are fairly repairable, especially when compared against other brands in that kind of price point. You're able to get the parts, you're able to service them, you're able to repair them, at least for multiple years, yeah. I would say. Plus, they actually working on, on our end, on the back end, working with Bissell support and doing Bissell warranty is all much easier for us and for, for people who own the Bissells than a lot of other brands, which is really nice. Yeah, I think they're a responsible, I think they're a responsible company. I, I mean, I don't think anybody's buying an $80 vacuum cleaner and expects it to be the deepest cleaning vacuum in the world in the last 30 years. Right. But I think they're definitely worth, worth the money. I think they provide parts for a reasonable period of time considering the price point for the machine. Right. Plus, um, in my opinion, this is all opinion, of course, as well, I think that the company is actually uh, a decent company. A lot of other companies that, you know, might send us cease and desist one of these days. Um, they they know that they're doing uh, some shady stuff, I'll, I'll put it as. Whereas Bissell, they understand that they're, they're, their target market is people who don't want to spend a crazy amount on vacuums, but they at least want to be able to repair it. And that's exactly what I Bissell think they're does. a good value. Yeah. And they save pets. Yes, legitimately actually do. Like, actually. like they, they put a lot of money right. into pet rescue and stuff like it's not like they rescued one puppy dog and put him on all the <laughs> all the packaging. It's not just a tax write-off. They uh they they do a lot of really good work for right. uh for for pet charities and I, I think that's great. Yeah, if you're in the budget zone, that's yeah, honestly also fun fact. Uh, the first female CEO in America was Mrs. Bissell. And okay. last I checked, they were still actually a family-owned company. And they're old. Like, people don't realize it. Yeah, they're they're like old. 120, 140. They're, they're old, like right. way before pre-World War One. Still American-owned, too, I think. Yep. Yep. Privately-owned family yeah. company. Long story Last short, I checked. That was a couple of years ago. Yeah. Um, I think they are, too. I think so, yeah. They're a strong company. Yeah. yeah. 
Uh, what's after that? Uh, so there's kind of like, there's a bunch of brands that kind of group together. There's, um, you know, like Dirt Devil and Hoover are actually owned by the same company. Um, Dirt Devil's kind of their lower end brand, and then Hoover is right over that. Uh, Eureka, Black & Decker now too. Mm. They're all kind of in that. They're often a little bit more expensive than Bissell's. Maybe not much, but kind of in that block. Honestly, they're all managed the same way. Um, Eureka and Black & Decker are owned by different companies. But I can honestly say my take on them is really all very similar. Um, very difficult to get parts. Uh, even basic stuff, like with Black & Decker and Eureka in particular, it's really hard to figure out what belts they take. Oh. A lot of times they're being manufactured by like the same company. They all take the same belt, but you can't figure out what it is. Mm -hmm. um, TTI, which owns Hoover and, and, and Dirt Devil, it's just, they're... And they're who else does TTI own? They're Auric. We'll get to that. Auric, That's on the, yeah, we'll yeah. get to that. But they're, my biggest concern with them, they're not particularly high-performing um, machines. My biggest beef, my concern with that is uh, you can't fix them. Like parts, getting parts is ridiculous. Yeah, and, and disposable. The tiniest little thing happens and it's New done. Vacuum. And okay. there's almost no service centers either. Right. I, I think some of our stores are listed as service centers for Hoover. We have not been a service center for five years. We cannot get off the list. Right, because they were so difficult to to do business with at that time. I think that's also another pretty important point is we get a lot of comments and a lot of people who come in to our stores and we recommend against some of these brands in certain cases and we'll always get told, well, my insert brand has a five-year limited warranty. Right. The word limited in there is really important. <laughs> it can be very limited. Very limited. What you'll see a lot of times is they will cover nothing. Really, basically, you do see that a lot, um, or or the warranty process is so awful. Like, if if it's past a year, their default is you have to pay to ship it back to us wherever, right. and they'll send you a refurbished replacement unit. But you're paying shipping, and right. it's like eighty bucks, right? right? Like that's crazy, right? Whereas with Bissell, we, he mentioned we're a service center for Bissell. We we don't sell much of their product. Like we sell a shampooer of theirs. That's it. Yep. But we're a service center. So you buy something at Walmart and you call them up and if they can't resolve the issue on the phone, they just send you to, to us. Or And there's stores, contractors all over the country that Bissell maintains relationships with. Right. And they have an actual warranty too. They have, you know? Yeah, it's an it's actual warranty. Nice. Like you bring it in, we'll look at it and like... We're taken care of. Yeah. So I think after that kind of block of, of brands, then you kind of get into, I think probably the Sharks would probably be the next up. Yeah, I think that the like, shark kind of occupies the two hundred to like three hundred dollar price point. Yeah, some of them are getting up there though. Some of them are a little high, and you can find some for a buck fifty too. Right, but generally speaking, they're going to yeah. be more expensive than your vessels. Yeah, generally speaking, um, <laughs> we've got a lot to say about shark. That uh, you know, if you've seen our other videos, it it's very clear to us being in the role that we're in, helping thousands of customers doing the repairs on these machines that shark is a company that does not want you to repair their machines they really don't it's not part can of can i say that without us getting sued probably i mean i don't i don't know if we can speak to what they want but but we do know sure, that they don't sure. sell right. repair components and they also don't sell parts for very long right and and repairing their machines the first time that I had to personally repair a shark vacuum cleaner, it was a, tr a transformative moment in my life. It really was. Wasn't it like punishment for not checking it in properly? Like you like quoted that. way too low for the repair. And I was like, no, dude, that is a two hour repair. Right. You do it. And it was probably four hours. It was, they make it very tough. We have a video on it that's gotten a lot of traction yeah. where we see that Many people who own sharks have similar experiences to what we feel. And like I said, that's one of those brands where we're going to get some comments down below that are going to say, well, I had my shark navigator for 700 years and it never failed once. And sure, sure we're happy. Sure, that there, is we great. are happy that that happened to you. Right. And we're glad that you had a good experience and don't have to buy a new shark every couple of years. But that's not the general experience that we've seen yeah. personally. Um, so long story short, you know, that's one of those limited, <laughs> limited warranty brands. Um, 
we've had to help a couple customers get through some of their warranty processes and they just not a conducive uh, company. Really. Yeah. So uh, Kenmore, I think kind of is the next step up from a price point perspective. Probably. Um, generally around the $400 price point, generally speaking. Yeah. Um, and so I, I'm sure everybody's aware Sears has been through, you know, a lot of troubles in the last 30 years. Um, it's right. Sad for me, you know, studying retail, being in retail, it's sad to, to watch a, a retail giant like that stumble. But I'm not old, so you're, yeah. I don't know. My, that was my mom's Sears. first job was right. at a Sears, right. so okay. Right. Right. <laughs> right. But, you know, hey, hey I, I've heard great things about Sears. They were great. great I lived things. at a Sears house. Oh my God. You used to be able to buy a house in the catalog and they would ship it to you like on a train. How I lived in a Sears ever, house in Grand Junction. Ever see any financial problems as a company? I, I don't know. Like seriously, like you, they, the house. horses would come and take it off the train and like, drag it on like logs and then they right. put it together. Okay. I'm not kidding. And then they started making vacuum cleaners. Right. So anyway, moving on to their <laughs> vacuum. So for a long time recently, uh, Panasonic actually made a lot of their machines. Really good machines. They were a great like mid-level machine. And I, and I often say they were the last good vacuum cleaner in major box stores. Mm. We'll have people all the time that are like, I had a Kenmore canister for 20 years. And now I replaced it with a new Kenmore canister that looks like pretty, pretty much the way. same thing. And a year and a half later, I've got this little plastic thing is broken. Right. Um, and kind of what we're seeing with that is I, I think, I, I think it's the impacts of some of the struggles that they've had as a company. I'm not sure who's making their vacuums now. I'm not even sure if they actually own their, because they've sold off the brand like piecemeal. Right. Like they sold rights to it to Amazon or something. I have no idea. I do know that like technically, I don't know if you even know this, we're actually a Kenmore service center. Really? Like officially, yes. We're actually, Interesting. I through okay. our, our biggest parts vendor, mm -hmm. we actually are a service center through them. Mm. But we never had, and that was, four, this is before your time. This is like five years ago. We actually got set up. <laughs> right. Yeah, seriously. Our, it was a while ago, and we've never had a single person sent by Kenmore support into our stores for service or repair. So I don't oh. know what that means. Yeah, who knows what they're doing? I, yeah, I don't know. So I have a lot of concerns there. I can definitely tell you, I personally don't think that they are worth the price point that they're sold for currently. Okay. Do you um, think they're better than the brands that we listed earlier? Do you think? What's your opinion on that? I Four to five hundred dollars is the price point they occupy, and I have had too many of these things come in that are six months old right. with a broken plastic doohickey, <laughs> right. and like they're, they, the customer can't like they can't get through to warranty. I had a guy up in the Fort Collins store like two weeks ago, right? And it was a train wreck, and I just don't. I I'm they sure they work okay, now, yeah. but I like you see it, you see well, and you see a lot of the performance reviews, I'm not talking about the YouTube channel, but like reviews of performance right. on YouTube. And a lot of the machines perform fairly well. And by the way, I'm an Amazon affiliate, click below to buy it on Amazon right. and I'll get yeah. paid $5. Yeah. So like they do, and Consumer Reports has always reviewed the, absolutely reviewed the heck out of Kenmore. Right. And, and from a performance perspective, they seem to perform okay. I just, they're all, they're all broken. Right. Man, they I think that brings up a good point. Just to let all of you guys know, we're not sponsored by any of these brands. We do sell some of the other brands that we're going to get into, but we're not paid for people who watch this video and click on a certain link. Yeah, there's no click below. Like this Our link? channel is monetized though. Thank you all for, monetized. that's crazy. Yeah. Like I yeah. never thought of vacuum cleaners. I think cleaners. we're at over 3,000 subscribers now. I call them the vacies. Yeah. You know, it's our <laughs> little squad of people. But no, we're not supported by any of these brands financially. There's no click below to buy. Right. Uh, but that's good words on Kenmore. So after Kenmore, there's probably like maybe LG and Samsung before you get to like Dyson. Yeah, they're probably. about that. They're about that midline price point. Yeah, probably about four hundred bucks. Yeah. I could be totally Three to four. wrong on that. No, that's no about idea. that's about right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Personally, I I don't I don't know why you would buy an LG vacuum cleaner. So speaking with other people in the appliance industry, I think they make really good appliances. Right. Um, I, you're watching this be recorded on a Samsung phone, which I love. Mm. Um, Mom said, if you don't have anything good to say, don't say anything at all. I don't think I have anything. Just, just they're there. They're, they're there. Using, they've, they've got a brand name. They do. They do. And I just don't, I don't there's no support infrastructure. There's no right. knowledge there's of the industry. There's not, yeah. Yeah. 
I think another one right around there that might be kind of similar to LG and Samsung would be, uh, how do you pronounce it? Teneco? 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 Yeah. I'm reserving my opinions on them. Right. They're like midline and, you know, they're obviously not a machine that's going to last a trillion years. They don't have a huge support network. Right. But... They're pretty inexpensive. The ones I've seen perform okay. I guess the problem though is the ones that I've seen are people who are coming in our stores to get them repaired that are two years old and they can't get parts. Right. So, but they're, I think my biggest concern with them is they are a very new brand. They're very new to the industry. Right. And when you look at companies like Bissell, that's 120 years old and Ricard and Sibo that I think are like, like 80 and 70 years old or something. Old as heck. I mean, even Dyson is like yeah, 20, 30 old years now, old. Yeah. And then you look at these new brands that are just a random company that pops is up. on Amazon all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. I we'll reserve our opinions on. Yeah, I got, I've got no opinion right now. We'll see what happens. Just in case they turn out to be great, and we start selling them or something. Yeah, yeah that could be <laughs> awesome. You know, I guess after that, Dyson I think comes logically. Yeah, I think Dyson's that. about the six hundred dollar yeah. between the four to six hundred dollar price point generally. Four to six hundred. Sometimes you see their stick vacuums go for higher. Yeah, you know, so they can throw them on sale. Or, yeah, you know, whatever. Yeah. $1,100 and then it's on sale for $700. <laughs> right, on Amazon. Um, Dyson, oh, there's a lot to say about Dyson. I don't know exactly how long we want this video to be. You guys are probably like, get through it already. You're already vacuumologists certified. But Dyson, they make pretty good vacuum cleaners yeah. for the department stores, yeah. is how I would put it. They're, I mean, absolutely, they are the best vacuum cleaner that Walmart offers. Right. I mean, well, I don't mean it like that, well, but yeah, like yeah. Target, they whatever, are. department stores. Department stores. I didn't mean it to sound like exactly what it sounded like. Right. Yeah, but like, like yeah, if you had like, you're at the stoplight and you're like, should I buy a vacuum from a vacuum dealer that knows the industry or should I buy it from a department store and like somebody jumps in your car and puts a gun to your head, they're like, go to Target and buy a vacuum right now. Right. Just buy a Dyson, buy definitely. A Dyson. Yeah, parts availability is a little better too. Yeah, they're getting better. Uh, well, well, better than, getting... than the other ones. They're getting worse on part availability but whatever. Personally. Yeah. but performance is definitely up there though they're definitely better than, than some of the other ones yeah. i think um i think personally what i would say is you know if you're in that dyson price range that five to seven eight hundred dollar price range there are better options there are out much there. better options at the same price yeah i think that's true i would say hit up your local vacuum store see what they got around that price range, you know, because that's you typically the entry point from a dealership, but that is the entry point. That is your entry point. And you can, for that money, you can actually do a lot better. Pretty solid you can get some pretty price. solid stuff at that price point. Yeah. Like at the $90 Bissell price point, we don't have anything to offer. Right. Nothing, Dealers yeah. don't. Yeah. And, and that's a, that's a, that's a solid pick if that's, if that's what your budget budget is. But if you're at the five, six, $700 price point that you're Dyson land, Right. At least go look at some go options. Go dealer, yeah. At least see what they have. Cause yeah. Those vacuums will, will be a lot better for you. Yeah. I think after Dyson, after about that 800 price range is when you typically start seeing Mila. You're in kind of like Mila land a little bit there. Yeah, I think that's really where we get into like a, a block of ultra premium brands. Mila, Ricard, Cibo, right. Aris, you know, all that stuff. All the random um, ones, yeah. Yeah, you hit the $600 and up price point. Yeah, you um, get into the real good vacuums. Mila, um, I would say no cease and desist, please. They're moving in a direction that I think could be seen as unfavorable, to put it softly. What we're starting to see with the Milas is, generally speaking, parts can get pretty tough to find, which... Functional parts, yeah. Functional parts can get tough to find, um, which... When you're talking about an ultra premium vacuum cleaner, it's just not what you want. Yeah, you know, when you're talking about getting a working functional wand from the vendor for a seventeen hundred dollar vacuum cleaner, yeah, you got some problems. Yeah, that yeah. that's yeah. But in terms of performance, we don't want to get sued. No, we don't want to get sued. But in terms of performance, <laughs> they are yeah, much they better do. than everything else yeah, we listed. Absolutely, well. their They're performance. Yeah, yeah, their performance very good. Good filtration. Very good. Um, you're gonna have. Some expensive supplies, though. I yeah, think that's, that's, that's important to realize. 
in, in the beginning of the video, I was talking about how typically your bags are going to be 24, 25 bucks for a six pack. It's like 20 for a four pack. Yeah, I think it's even more. And now. they're pretty they, small. Is yeah, it gone up? Yeah, I think yeah. it's gone up. But. So generally speaking, with 45 meals, bucks on filters <laughs> yeah. for one filter. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to have a little bit higher recurring costs with the Mila. That's true. But you do get good performance. And when they work, they work pretty well. Yeah. Um, and when you're able to get the parts, they're available. <laughs> Um, and you can definitely brag to your neighbors that you own a Mila because right. there is definitely brand recognition there. And they do the actually country. have good warranty support. It's kind of a pain to go through all of it, but at least they have it. So a little bit funky, but I mean, honestly, if you really want a canister vacuum and you really want it to be a Mila, I don't... I don't Just make sure that. you have a warranty center nearby who can help you if you have any issues. Right, yeah. right. Exactly. Yep. Going from there, I think what? We have a... Just a hodgepodge of different brands. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff. Um, Aris, uh, which was previously Electrolux. So Electrolux and Aris are different brands now. Something weird happened. I don't understand exactly what took place, but the Electrolux name essentially was bought and sold. And mm. it, it's not, you know, the Electrolux. My mom actually owned an Electrolux. Right. A lot of people's moms. A did. lot of people's moms owned yeah. Electrolux. Vacuums R Us was actually popular. was founded by an Electrolux door to door salesperson who was mm. who was very successful in Colorado and Wyoming. Right. But the the they, they lost their name. So like the Electrolux that they're selling in Walmart is not the Electrolux that my mom had for thirty years. Right. So they still make Electrolux. Sort of. So they changed their like Aris is the current company. True. Um, and they've been through some pretty tough times. I mean, you can't just lose your name. Right. Just like, so <laughs> right. there's been some issues, like there's some, been some quality issues on some of the machines, um, but they're still around. Um, their, their support is pretty good. I'm personally, I'm friends with a couple of, of, of independent stores that are dealers for, for them. And they, they say their support is pretty good. Um, a solid machine. I think my biggest concern with getting an heiress is whether you have enough stable local heiress dealers right that's a big concern like some brands like some brands you can do like a dealer search and just the whole country's covered sure. so you can buy a product that you know is going to last 20 years know if you move to oklahoma you got a dealer right. with heiress i don't know how how saturated uh the dealer network is at this point that's my biggest i think concern with buying a premium product like that right and then i guess in that same boat there's you know things like like Kirby, I think they still make vacuum cleaners. Oh, they do. Exactly the same as their old ones, right? It's yeah. A little bit funky. I guess if it's not broke, don't fix it. Well, or something. That's one way to look at it. Right. They haven't really done a major redesign in forty years, I think. Yeah. So that that is a concern. They were recently acquired, actually, really? a couple years ago. Yeah. Um, and one of our good competitors um, is actually a, a service center for them, and they've right. been very happy with their communication and their support. So, I mean, if you're a, like a Kirby fanboy, you know, I, I don't know that that's really a bad pick. It looks like they're stabilizing a little bit. Yeah. They were charged under the RICO Act several times for criminal <laughs> uh, right. conspiracy and being a criminal enterprise because of some of their sales practices, but that was years ago was and they've been the through, past. The past you know, the past. the past is the past. They did some work, you know, on themselves. Right. And uh, I think, I think uh, you know, I think they're, they're, they're in the game still. What about something like uh, like Rainbow? I mean, I we see them in here from time to time. Really interesting machines with the water filtration. <sighs> Rainbow worries me, honestly. Okay. Like, I don't know how... So when the pandemic hit, the door-to-door, -door, the businesses that relied on really door-to-door -door didn't have a brick-and-mortar backing. Mm. They were already on thin ice to begin with. They, they weren't... They were not growing businesses to begin with. Gotcha. And when the pandemic hit and nobody could go door to door for a long time, I think a lot of those businesses really struggled with kind of retaining their identity. Rainbow worries me. I haven't seen a lot happening. Um, Rainbow's getting a lot of competition from just real lousy knockoff stuff. Mm. You like see a lot of water filtration. Yeah, stuff? water filtration stuff. And they're just not, I mean, I see the ads on Facebook all the time. And I know that people are susceptible to marketing. So I know they're looking at the rainbow, which is two thousand dollars or whatever, and then they look at this knockoff on Facebook that's four hundred dollars, <laughs> and I know that's hurting Rainbow's market. That concerns me, and that right. again, when I keep going back to this in the ultra premium class, I, I, buying a two thousand dollar vacuum cleaner is fine and good if that brand is going to be around in twenty and thirty years, and I'm not sure if that's going to be the case with with Rainbow or not. I have right. some concerns there. Plus, people the, love their old Rainbow stuff. So. There, it's a cult. It's interesting, yeah. It's a cult, it, it and the thing is, it was it was the first. Uh, man, I'm going to get in the weeds here. Water <laughs> hey, filtration. Weed water filtration is 
in my opinion, is ridiculous. It's not effective. And that's why the current rainbows, and, and I think a lot of rainbow people don't know this, they have HEPA filters in them. Really? Yes, they have massive HEPA filters okay. in them. Well, because what happened was water filtration, you know, 100 years ago or whenever they came out, mm -hmm. like before we landed on the moon, you know, right. water filtration was actually really effective. I mean, we were mm -hmm. trying to filter through like cloth and cotton fabric and stuff back then. So the idea of bubbling dirt through water is great. But then like, you know, computers and the moon landing sure, and, right. you know, technology. Things. And so the door-to-door -door people would start carrying these particulate counters and show the rainbow people that it was blowing dirt, like mm. big time. Like it was terrible filtration. Right. So rainbow put HEPA filters on them. So now all they are is another bag. <laughs> They're just another bag that's vacuum. Interesting. Anyway, that's well, rainbow. We went into You're giving me the weird and... stuff. Hey, vacuumologist. Take, take SIBO. Take, take, take SIBO. SIBO. All right. We'll cover SIBO. That one will be fun. Okay. So SIBO is a German brand. I like them a lot. You know, they have really good value. They tend to last a really long time too. Um, SIBO actually has its roots, you know, to get into the weeds again, as kind of a commercial company. They're owned by a gigantic commercial huge. Karcher company. Karcher is huge. Yeah, a giant commercial company, mainly in Europe. And SIBO is kind of their residential uh, brand and what you see with SIBO is you get a lot of value for the money so like a lot of the times we'll compare Mila to SIBO and SIBO just kind of blows them out of the water just to be honest um, don't send a cease and desist once again please. well I mean they got a 10-year warranty yeah 10-year warranty on the, warranty. the Onyx stuff has to I mean right tons of tools available for them and probably the biggest difference between the the two premium canister vacuums that I personally see is the long-term price up front they're generally about the same about right. 1700 for the top of the line about 1600 for the top of the line but long term if you ever need parts they're probably twice as expensive on the other canisters versus the SIBO yeah and that comes back to kind of the commercial stuff because they manufacture so many parts every year for their commercial customers they kind of have the economies of scale and can sell them for cheaper yeah I think they also have a pretty diverse line they're definitely more canister focused, but their upright vacuums are pretty solid They're as well. They're solid, yeah. I really like them, yeah. especially the X7. Uh -huh. If you guys have ever done any research onto that, it has like automatic height adjustment. It's pretty There's cool. a lot of dealers too. Right. So like you can buy a SIBO and they've expanded dramatically in the last five years. Their dealer footprint is massive. Right. So you can buy a SIBO in Boulder and move to, you know, Washington right. and You'll you've got a dealer. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there's yeah, that's uh, a big deal. SIBO dealers basically everywhere now. At yeah. this point, I think basically every vacuum store you're going to go to will have it, at least probably 90% if I had to guess, uh, which is definitely something to consider. So SIBO, I don't have anything bad to say really about SIBO. Um, I mean, do you? I mean, I, they're not free. I mean, yeah, you got to pay for them. I mean, the only thing, everything, I only complaint I ever hear is, yeah, I got to pay for it. Yeah, you do. That's yeah. true. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> it's true. But yeah, I mean, that's, that's the scoop on SIBO. I, I like them. I think that they're definitely here to stay too. They've been around for, for yeah, they've been around forever. You know? And I guess the last one that leads us to is probably the car, right? Yeah, yeah. And and I mean, full disclosure, I've got I've got a long history with the car, and and I have a, a positive bias in their favor. Um, they've you know, like any company, they've had some ups and downs. They've had a couple of models that were duds, but yeah, you know, I just want to be really transparent that I, I, I as a company, I like them. Um, I've met the CEO. I've, I've met a lot of people there. I've met a lot of their techs, uh, been to their assembly line. Right. Um, and I, I just feel like their, their mindset, the way they do business is just super compatible with the, the way that we kind of do things. We care about people. We work with our customers face to face. Right. And so I, I, I have a pretty significant bias in their favor. Right. Um, well, to be fair, I've, I've never met anyone there. Um, you know, never talk to the CEO or anything. And I, I really like the cars too. I mean, they're just from a machine Fair standpoint, enough. they're very good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, as, as far as, I mean, there's a, I guess there's a, there's a bunch of points we, we touched on with the other machines. As far as dealer network, I believe they have the largest dealer network of any vacuum cleaner brand uh, in the right. world. I'm still, probably still bigger than SIBO. By uh, they are actually, yeah, they yeah. are actually a lot bigger than. Yeah. Well, you have a lot of stores that are only Ricard dealers, yes. right? You yes, yes. You have a lot of stores that are strictly Ricard dealers right. and strong stores too. It's not like they're hole in the wall there, but that's all they deal with is Ricard because they have that relationship. Right. Um, their product line is vast. They have an amazing selection. I, I think that some of the best ultralights, their right. Tandem Air is in my so opinion, the best upright vacuum cleaner. They're very weak in canisters right now. 
Um, That's true. We're hoping to see some new products come out of them from Canister. So if you're looking at a Canister, uh, you know, today, I don't suggest it. Um, but I'm confident that because that market is growing, that they're going to they're going to bring us. The thing with Ricard is they don't bring the product to market. I know, I know darn well that they are working on something, but they do not bring stuff to product until it's rock solid. Yeah. Um, and the big thing with Ricard, I, I think, is it, their big thing is performance. Like they're the muscle car. They're the chest pounding <laughs> yeah. American CDA, muscle. Yeah. yeah, I mean they're out of Missouri. They're 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 the performance machine. If 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 I want to blow somebody's socks off with a vacuum cleaner demo, I pull out the Recaro R40. Right. I'm like, you want to see the, the craziest thing you've ever seen? Like I literally <laughs> will have people. I I've been it's 13 years now. I will literally have people come back that I showed a Recar R40. It was before it's even called that. I I showed them 12 years ago. And they're like, I've been thinking about it ever since. Right. Like they're that powerful. That that's a big thing. But yeah. you know, parts availability. Um, they have a commitment to parts availability. I bet in their warehouse, it is vast. Right. It is massive. Um, you know, and they've had mistakes. I know there's some other you know reviews out there. They've had some specific models that they had some issues with. Uh, they own it. Right. I've I've had them replace sixteen hundred dollar vacuum cleaners, no questions asked, because I asked them to. I said, hey, we got to do this. We got to do the right thing. I don't want to repair this. I know it's under warranty. I don't want to repair it. I want to replace it for this customer. Right. And they've, they've done stuff I've seen no other company do to, yeah. to take care of issues. To, to I think that's mistakes. another thing to touch on since we're going over some of the other ultra premium brands is Recar and SIBO as well. They develop their platforms over time. Whereas some of the other ultra premium brands will have these issues for years or even decades. decades. And that just never ever get resolved. They know it's a problem and they just never fix do anything. Fix the upright lock that's been broken for 15. Just fix it. <laughs> exactly. Just or fix it. Reel or whatever. Why do I have, why do I have 20 of these parts in stock at any given time? Right. Like I have 20 in stock because I know I need that many in stock. Exactly. Just fix it. Yeah. And that's something that I really like about Recar especially. SIBO does it too, but Recar I think does it to you in a further degree. They'll notice any kind of issue uh, with oh, the they take it personal. They do. They, like, they it's do. emotional. They're like, right. that's broken. I'm fixing it. <laughs> right. Yeah. And then they release a new re revision so yep. that every new machine doesn't have that issue. Yep. And, you know, they just slowly refine it over years and decades until it's a really, really robust platform. Yeah. I think the Tandem Air just turned 20. I think their super lights are even older, actually. Probably, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They have some some old machines. I think their their newest machine is what the R twenty five probably. Yep, I think that's the newest. Yeah, and that's that was like what four five? four or five years old. Yeah, yep. it's a pretty old machine, relatively at least. Yep. You know, mm -hmm. and they're releasing revisions for that too. Yep. You know, just slowly over the years, making it better and better. Yeah, that's a big deal. Yeah. What else we got? Uh, simplicity. Oh yeah! Wow. Okay. <laughs> the so Jill, the lone Jill in the corner. Yeah, I don't know how we missed it. So. Yeah, well, Simplicity is made by the same company as Recar, but it's it, and we've got a video. If you're a previous Simplicity owner and you're curious what's going on with that, there's a video. What's the difference between Simplicity and Recar? They used to be identical, and the brand split. So Simplicity is kind of their entry level uh, machines below Recar, and they're priced like anywhere from like 150, I think, up to like 500 bucks or something for the can, something for the like scale. that. Yeah. yeah, and they're. You know, I really, honestly, I, I kind of look at them the way I look at Bissell. Like their their five hundred dollar machine is absolutely worth five hundred bucks. If, like, right. if I was going to choose between a Chemor and a Simplicity, for example, I would choose the Simplicity. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. jump on the Simplicity right. uh, at that price point. Um, it's a U.S. owned company, so you know we're, they're here to support the product. Um, I also forgot to mention too that Recar, similar to Sibo, also has a. Uh, a lot of commercial machines out there. Oh yeah, so that's they, true. They, they have the a massive commercial product parts line. Parts are pretty easy to get yep. and they're relatively cheap too. Yep. Yep. Like giant commercial stuff, which is good because yeah. that means parts and bags and yeah, they filters are going to be available forever. Uh, they own CleanMax, they own PowerFlight as well. Tornado. Tornado I think is theirs, yep. Uh, yeah, they, they own a decent amount of brands. I mean, I, <laughs> we touched on a lot of stuff here. Yeah, I don't know if anybody's going to make it all the way Seriously, through this video. I hope you're still watching. This is a long video, I, I get that, but hopefully you're learning a lot as we go because as something something as boring as vacuum cleaners has a lot of little details in there, hopefully. There's a lot to it. You know, uprights, canisters, bagless, stick, bag, all that kind of stuff. I think knowledge is power. I think it's important that people understand the basics of what their options are. I, I, 
I, I really think that's what this is about. I think there's a lot of, of marketing out there that could be really confusing. Right. And mm -hmm. I think taking the, who knows how long this video is going to be, 40 minutes? Who knows? Who knows? You know? You know, I but think it's worthwhile. hopefully it helps out. And I guess just kind of to conclude here, I, I personal opinions from two humble vacuum store professionals, okay? This is, you know, just our opinion. If you're in that kind of entry level, low budget price point, I'm telling you, I recommend Bissell. I think Bissell's a solid I, choice. I yeah. really think that they're the best there. Uh, if you're in that kind of slightly higher price point, maybe five to eight hundred dollars, maybe you hate brick and mortar stores, uh, small businesses. You want them to fail? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Then get a Dyson. But <laughs> you know, I, if you hate your community <laughs> right. and want the economy in your town to to crumble, don't go to your vacuum store. Right. right. But, I, I but think seriously, I, yeah, Dyson at that price the, range, go to your vacuum is an option. store. You know, and I think that's also still the thing with ultra premium. If you're in that, if you want something really good, hit up your local vacuum store. They'll they'll have a ton of machines here that you can test out and kind of check out. You know. Yeah, and and most ultra premium is only available through dealers. The only what you could classify as ultra premium it you can buy online and like Amazon right. is uh, Mila. Um, even SIBO, like you can buy certain models on Amazon, but as a dealer, we're not allowed to sell the, the, the top end products, the best products. Mm -hmm. And even a bunch of the midline stuff are excluded. If we sell it on Amazon. Why, uh, do, they, why do they do that? Well, a lot of it has to do with uh, warranty and service oh, again. So right. if they, if they, you know, we can sell, we can sell a SIBO at $10 above cost to somebody who's in California and sure. still make $10. Who cares? <laughs> right. We never have to service it. We don't have to help them. Right, but then, um, local stores. but then the local store didn't make a buck, and they're going to go out of business. And and right. and SIBO's smart; they've been around for forever, and they've seen other companies like <clears throat> alienate their dealer network. And so now, again, going back to the warranty, you have a five-year warranty, and there's nobody who supports it because, like, like Hoover, I'll just I'll call that right out. We don't do Hoover warranty, as evidenced by this long, boring video. It's important to get the right product for your specific home. Right. And as a category, uh, um, vacuum cleaners are the most returned product in the appliance category in department yeah. stores. And mm -hmm. it's because, I mean, yeah, they don't sell great products, generally speaking, but people buy the wrong thing. You have no way to tell. It's a cardboard box. You take it out, you bring it home, you try it out, and you're like, nope, and you bring it back. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. That's worked into the price of products that are sold in department stores. Mm -hmm. You know, they assume they're going to have to eat Returns that kind of return. Right. That's worked into the price. With premium vacuums, they don't want to see all these crazy returns and dissatisfied customers. So it's best to present that in a showroom and be able to work with a professional to get the right product the first time. Right. It's not to say we don't get it wrong. You know, like I, I said, I, I, you know, I pushed a product on somebody before that I felt that I personally liked that wasn't right for them, right. and we, you know, had to do an exchange or something. But right. at least we're here to it. exchange it. Take yeah. Care of the customer. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, guys. It's been the Josh and Aiden show. Seriously, you guys are now vacuumologists. Seriously, if you watched all the way through this, what do the kids say? You are a hero. Is? You know, leave a like, <laughs> comment for engagement. Yeah, do something. Whatever. Subscribe if you want to see more boring vacuum content. And share it with your aunt so she knows what vacuum to get. Or your mom who had an Electrolux. Make sure she doesn't get another one. Yeah, they're not that's the same, true. Apparently. Yeah, mom, they're not the same. You know, got to let her know. So thanks for watching, guys. Seriously. Seriously.